dear brothers and sisters, it's the love of the great spiritual masters overhead, which we've all received sometime in our lives over the years, that uh, draws us here. And as we start to uh, think of life itself, uh, and as uh, we age, the struggles of life that we pass through uh, as we are growing, they seem to like um, uh, kind of fade away as our understanding of life gets better. So we're all hoping that as we age, that our understanding and clarity of our purpose makes us uh, lead a life which is uh, more fulfilling. And so um, many of us who got touched through the love of these great spiritual masters, at a young age, uh, we might have been initiated and our understanding uh, of the path might not have been clear because we got initiated because our parents or our grandparents wanted us to be initiated. Yeah. Or they brought us to satsang and they realized that us being on a spiritual path is going to be good in the long run. And then as life goes on, uh, we go astray. Uh, we go in all kinds of directions of this physical world. And then, um, with time, uh, the realization starts to set in that um, there is something more to our existence than dealing with just the ups and downs of our daily life. You know, as a young person, when we go from school to college, uh, it's a very difficult time. It's a time of learning, it's a time of growth, it's a time of questioning everything. And as we start with questions in our teenage years, before getting to college even, our parents, all kinds of interesting things start to happen. In our lives and the lives of our parents too. And then we get to college, and as we get to college, then uh, we kind of away from home, we're more freer, uh, we indulge in uh, all kinds of activities that we think might be good for us. And then comes a time when we have graduated, we realize we need to work, we need to support ourselves. And as that process goes on for a few years, then we get to a stage where we run into someone that we think we want to get married to. And then marriage happens in our life, then we have kids, and then all other interesting things start to happen. And as we're raising our kids, um, our attention is, is trying to take the best care of the kids. And I think it's at that stage that some things start to change in our lives. Uh, when we feel responsible, and most parents feel responsible towards their kids, when responsibility falls on our shoulders, then we start to look at life from a different point of view. And it's then that we realize, hey, we need to help someone. Because we realize that children are very, very young. They need help. We have to hold their hands so they can walk properly. We need to teach them uh, so that they can behave properly in whatever environments we live. Uh, we need to uh, then try to teach them, whether it's ourselves or through others, whatever uh, we feel would be good for them in their lives. Okay. We need to clothe them well, we need to, uh, most parents need to, you know, bathe their kids every day, put them to bed, and all the interesting you know, activities of being responsible for someone else starts to run. I think it's at that stage that one starts to realize the importance of helping someone, taking care of someone. Now, why do parents take care of the kids? They think this is ours. 
this baby is mine. I need to do my very best to make my baby the best baby in the whole world. That's natural. All, all parents feel like that. Right? So we care. And, and we find that at that stage of a life, most of the parent's life is devoted towards the child. Because we feel responsible for the child. And then as time goes on, the children get bigger and then the whole cycle starts again. Whatever relationship we had with the parents start to happen between the kids and us and, uh, you know, the cycle keeps on going on and on and on. Okay. But as we go through these experiences, I think the clarity of our relationship with everyone else starts to change. Because whenever we feel responsible and whenever we feel that uh, we need to care, selfless service starts to come into our being. All parents do everything for the kids, selflessly. And so to extend a helping hand to someone else becomes kind of more natural to us. And during that process, as we are going through that process, and as we look at how devoted we as ourselves are to our children, or our friends or our ages are to our children, then we start to have other feelings start to be generated in ourselves. And as life is going on, the realization of the miracle of having a child come into our family sets in because many of us as we grow up, uh, we find that many of our friends, they might be friends from when we were very young for our neighborhood, they could be friends from our schools, they could be friends from college, they could be friends that we made as we were working, that there are some of them who don't have any children. And as that sits in, then the miracle of having a child in our life and the joys that we find in our life through the presence of the child starts to set in. Or there could be times where couples could be trying to have a child for a few years and they don't have a child. And it's then that you start to think about who is providing that miracle and we turn towards God, the Creator. And when we recognize miracles in our day-to-day -day life, which many of us recognize only when we have our own children, or we might adopt a child. When we have children in our life, and we see how a child, you know, could be on a sofa, and we think the child is going to fall away and something is going to happen, but it's saved. How many times in a day it looks like there's miracles after miracles which are happening with the children? But the children, you know, they are not fully aware of their own physical presence, okay? So they might be running into something, parents say, oh, let me stop, otherwise he or she is going to hit, let's say, the door or the wall or some other furniture that you have or something. And it's then that we start to recognize how many miracles are happening in our life? And it's when we start to realize how many miracles are happening in our life, then we start to think about who's providing these miracles. Okay. And it's through experience that we start to think about God. And St. Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj has written a very, very beautiful verse about this. He says, Nafas, nafas, mujhe lazim hai shukra ka sadda ki mere dos ka aisa hai zindagi meri. So, Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, who, who told us what our life is all about, who, who told us how we should be living, who, who, who showed us a path that we are supposed to live as we come into this world as a human being. 
इसे नफस नफस मुझे लाजिम मैं शुक्र का सदा कि मेरे दोस्त का ऐसा है जिंदगी मेरी ही सेज इन एवरी ब्रेथ आई हैव ग्रेटिट्यूड फॉर माई बेस्ट फ्रेंड एंड हिज बेस्ट फ्रेंड इज गॉड एंड गॉड इज ईच एंड एवरी वन वॉज बेस्ट फ्रेंड बिकॉज इस इज दिस एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ माइंड is is a gift of the creator and that's what we need to think of also so darshan singh ji maharaj singh with with every breath like each breath which means at each and every moment of my life i have gratitude for god for giving me this existence and and when we try to understand this verse many things come out loud and clear the first gift of god is that we have the human existence there's just no doubt about that because it's only in the human existence that we have the faculties to truly recognize who we are and so we find there are at this time about 8 billion people who are living in the world but then how many of them are thinking about life itself all of the 8 billion people are definitely focused in the world we see with these outer eyes we hear with their outer ears we have the other faculties that we use to live in this world and from morning to night that's all we do we like strain just like a stray dog we run here we run here we run here and what happens in the life of most people there are always uh, some ups and downs that are coming some kind of difficulty comes in in one man or another could be physical could be some relationships could be some financial difficulties there are some ups also we think you are happy you know if your country wins uh, in the in the world cup you happy they lose they say boy the coach should be kicked out <laughs> and we all you know think like that right so there are some ups and some downs you know you get to one level you're happy then you lose it they yeah, it's serious you know it's, and the same thing happens with the school teams the school teams are winning we're very happy and ra 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 and all of a sudden you know they lose a the game and but no one's thinking about them we go into other things so in our life we're drawn into the world either this thing or this thing or this thing or this if you look at your life that's what's happening all day too so what has happened is in this attention being in the activities of the world outside we have forgotten the true gift that we have and we have forgotten the giver So Sant Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj is telling us that even with every breath I have gratitude in my heart for God. But the gratitude is the first thing that we need to have to be able to experience the realities of our existence. We were talking about the 8 billion of people living and in you know, and most of them being focused on the world. then something happens whether a family member whether a friend whether we read a magazine we find out about a spiritual path and we go to some kind of a meeting whether it's a satsang or a public talk or something has drawn us there right? and we have a chance to to be in the presence and when we are there many things happen when we come for the first time when we come there with an open mind and we come with being able to be in a state where we think we can get something it is then that some kind of spark happens to us and we come back again 
It will be the first time, we come back a few times, somewhere along that line, and as we come there, we are always asked to sit in silence or meditate. And as that happens, somewhere along the line, we get some kind of uh, an experience which is beyond what we experience through our physical senses. It is when we have an experience by ourselves. You know, we live in a very scientific age, okay? And in this age, we are always told to believe only something that can be proved. And so what are the scientists doing? The scientists are doing experiments. And they're tabulating the experiment, they're looking at the results, and by looking at the results, they can say that the theory that they propose is correct or not. Okay. So when we ask to meditate, and when we look at the lives of the spiritual saints and mystics and spiritual masters, we find that they are asking us to also do an experiment. A true spiritual path is not talking about blind faith. A true spiritual path is talking about experimenting the hypothesis of us being connected to God, but experimented on ourselves. And so when we sit in silence, that's our experiment. And so when we have that connection made for the first time, our faith in our relationship with God strengthens. Now when our faith in God strengthens, because we have experienced something beyond the physical, then we start to have that experience be run more and more and more. And the more times we run an experiment, the more data we collect. And the more data we collect gives us more clarity into the results of whatever we are experimenting with. And so, with time, as we start to follow the techniques which are given to us by the spiritual master of those times, that we're learning those techniques, but as we follow them properly, and we do this experiment again and again and again, what happens is, as we start to experience the inner divine treasures, as we experience vistas of consciousness beyond the physical, it is then that our faith turns into devotion. Why? Because we are the ones who have experienced that. It's not like our parents told us something, or our grandparents told us something, or our friends told us something, or someone else told us something, or we read something is that we have had that experience ourselves. And this is why Sankripal Kripal Singh Ji Maharaj would always say, seeing is above all, and when he talked about seeing, he's not talking about seeing with his outer eyes, he's talking about seeing with the inner eye. Here, the seat of the soul, the single eye, the third eye, the Shiv Nitha, the Dasma Dwar. That it's, it's when we enter that stage, when we get to that stage, when we are pulled beyond the physical into the inner spiritual regions with help and guidance, that when we have that experience, is then that we totally get devoted. Is then that devotion goes to God because we realize the presence of God in our own lives. And so it's that experience which we need to have, or it's that experience which we uh, have periodically, which makes us then not only have faith in God, but also be truly devoted to God 24 hours a day. We can show our gratitude to God 
by meditating more, by experiencing God more, by, by helping everyone else more, by, by helping all, not only humanity, but all other living forms also. By realizing that this is God's creation and the presence of God is in each and every one of us. And, and once we have true devotion to God, which only comes by having experiences of God again and again and again. And that comes as we meditate again and again and again. And once we ourselves are having those experiences, we truly are experiences of love. Because if God did not love us, we would not be here if God did not have love for us. Even when we are in the human presence, we would still be straying. And before that presence, God only knows what other existences our soul is straying in. And so it's the love of God which gave us this human birth. It's the love of God which makes us be in a state where we are able to learn the true techniques of meditation and sitting still and recognizing ourselves at the level of our soul and it's God's grace that we are experiencing the connection with the divine light and sound of God which brought all creation into being which emanated from the Creator and brought all creation to being so as we connect with that divine power then we can soar back to the lap of God which is the sole purpose for which we all have this physical human existence. So the key to life, and we think that as we age our understanding gets better and better and better, and as I was talking before, is when we have our own children, I think we start to recognize the miracles of life more than we do when we are by ourselves before that time. So as, as life goes on, as we understand the clarity of existence, it can happen at any time. It doesn't happen to be only after we have kids. It can happen at any stage of our lives. The earlier we turn our attention towards God, the more time we have to truly experience the realities of this existence and the realities of our connection with the Creator. And, and, and this is why Sandarshan Sindhi Maharaj is saying that with every breath I am thankful to God, I am grateful to God. Because it's God's grace that I have this existence and because of God's grace that I have this existence and then because of me being on the spiritual path through the grace of my spiritual masters that I have an opportunity to experience my relationship with the Creator. And so as we all gather today, if we keep that into our systems, if we ponder on it, we think about it, uh, the key is the experiment. The key is meditation. The key is to have the experience ourselves. You know, when we have it ourselves, we have it. No one has to tell us. We don't have to believe someone else. We know it happened. So a lot of people say, I saw this happening. Because we rely, we think, whatever we see, this outside eyes is real. We forget that all of this physical world is an illusion. We think it's real. So here we say, oh, I saw it, I heard it, this is real. So those are the senses we operate with. But when we rise above the physical body consciousness, it's only then that we start to unravel the layers which are covering our real self, our soul. And the more we do this experiment, more and more of the coverings start to be removed so that we can get to this state where we are experiencing ourselves as soul. Before that, the lower three regions are all uh, where 
the camouflage is so much we can't experience ourselves. But when we get there, because the layer is so thin, it's the first time we recognize we are soul, but that still is not the end of our journey. We still need to go beyond that and get to such kind. So that everything which is surrounding our soul is removed so that our soul has an opportunity to merge back in God. The process of recognizing ourselves as we truly are is called meditation. So let's meditate for a few minutes. Uh, please sit as comfortably as you can. Close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyeballs should be straight, focus eight or ten inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, those of you who have been initiating the mysteries of the beyond, uh, please do your simran. And those of you who are new here, please repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. This repetition of God's name should be done mentally and not out loud. Right in front of you, you start to experience light. Could be flashes of light, could be circles of lights. Lights could be coming and going. These lights could be of various colors. Could be white, could be golden, could be red, blue, yellow, orange, or any other color. Please focus your attention in the middle of your experience. And with God's grace, many, many vistas will open up for you. I pray to God Almighty and to the three great spiritual masters of the past century, Azur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Sankipal Singh Ji Maharaj, and Dayal Puru Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, to help each and every one of us connect with the divine power within and to experience the divine light in its effulgence. Uh, we'll be sitting for a few minutes. I'll be getting you out of this meditative state and my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
Please sleep off.